One of the uh, solutions that I've come up with in my time at Greenbrier that has come up time and time again in the reports I've been asked to make is duplicating essentially a spreadsheet that the business has been using for a period of time and bringing that same look and feel into Power BI. And one of the challenges you run into with that is you end up with a whole series of measures that you're trying to put into something that looks like a table and it just doesn't want to play right when you're trying to put it in. So there's several solutions. We actually talked about this somewhat with some financial um, demos, I think three different sessions ago. But the solution I've been using is the one I'm going to show you guys today, which uh, capitalizes off the switch formula. So in here, when it feels like loading, there we go. So I've been asked, I've pulled some sales data off the internet, so I'm not busy giving away any of Greenbrier's um, proprietary information. But they've asked to present these different items in this particular order because these are the markets that they're busy targeting right now and they want to keep an, an eye on that. So I have my, um, my data that I've brought in. And I've made a number of measures, all of which correspond to these, either quantities or the dollars of sales. And if I go trying to drag those into the table right now, it's just not going to um, play nice the way that I want it to. I end up with them going all across rather than down. It simply doesn't work. So what I've been doing for that is making a, um, First off, a table that shows me, let's go into this side here, a table that shows me all of the different um, line items that I want in that report with the, uh, in the particular order that they want to see them in, which is never anything like alphabetical, especially when you're doing something um, financial, balance statements, that sort of stuff. They always have their way they want them grouped together. And then adding in this order column, which sets that order. So when I'm in here and I have that, I've taken this sales group and I've set the sort by, by that order so that I'm always keeping it sorted in that particular order and I don't have to worry about that it's not in alphabetical or anything along those lines. But to get the actual measures, to show up in there as just one column of all of those different measures, I utilize a switch formula. Put that nice and big there. So this uh, switch formula is not, um, it's very much like a case statement or um, an if statement if you're working in other languages. The first part of it just talks about looking at the max of that order column that we had made in the other table to say, okay, what's the maximum number that I'm getting in that when I put it in? And then taking whichever number it's getting returned, courtesy the uh, filter context of the table you're putting it into, and returning a measure back. And you'll notice that all of those measure names match up to the measures that I had already made. You'll also notice that I've put in here a blank, and that blank is just because I found in some of the reports that they're used to seeing blank lines to kind of divide that up, easy in Excel, a little harder in here. So I have a blank formula that is literally just a space, so that it'll give that nice blank column in there, or blank row, pardon me. So when you take this switch formula and you actually put it in, which I've done over here in this example. Zoom this in some. So I put that same switch formula in here. And I'm going to change that name from example, let's say, call it values. That's a little more meaningful. Go back over here to the table. And when I bring that in now, I'm going to get all of those different values in the order that they're used to seeing them in. And it makes it a lot more friendly when they're already used to seeing it that way to just kind of bring them along into the platform.
usually follow that up by trying to say, hey, you could also do some visuals and some other ways to look at it. But when you're trying to first bring them in, things that are familiar help the most. This also works well in a matrix environment where you can, I've already brought it in in this one, and you'll see that it's actually that little blank line ends up as this odd little blank divide in the matrix, not quite as obvious, but it's still there. And this allows me to bring in uh, date values and date hierarchies and be able to drill through and then giving them the ability to do, say, comparisons over certain months and be able to compare those values year to year, month to month, whatever range. Um, for some of the financials, we've done a rolling six month window so that they can see what those last six months are, as well as uh, totals if they wanted them there. So nothing terribly complex, but I found that I think about eight different times I've had to bring this in. I've also used it when I'm doing um, uh, pages that show the definitions of where I'm actually getting all those measures, how I'm going about calculating them, because that's one of the big questions we get from the business is, that's great, you have that data, how did you actually get that, where did it come from? And I've done the same thing with this, only instead of putting in measures, I actually put in um, just text in each of those. And then I can drag it in and it has that same order that they're used to looking at on the other page. They can go to a definitions page and everything's laid out in that same order and I can stay with that consistency without doing a text box, which I could, but it's kind of more convenient to use this. So, any questions on that? Greg's got the microphone, but you got one in the back. Yes, yeah, so this is really great because I'm going through a similar scenario right now myself. Um, can you just share what your data model looks like? Oh, sure. This data model is actually really simple. It's just a CSV that I had actually grabbed from uh, Kaggle. Oh, nice. And then can you just show the relationship? Tab if there are even sure. already in there. The only relationships I have going in here is just to the date dim table. Gotcha. Tying in the order date of this to the date and the date dim. Gotcha. And then the and that sales order group while in there doesn't have to be tied to anything. Yeah. It just kind of hangs off by itself. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Certainly. Sure, I think I've missed it a little bit. How do you assign the order to the sales group order table again? Can you, I can't quite hear. <laughs> uh, can you, can you, I think I missed, how do you assign the order to the sales group orders, oh. order table? So in that table, when you're in this spot, when you open the table, go to the sales group, up here in modeling is a sort by column, which lets you sort it by that order. Just, oh, to create the table is going in and just entering the data. And I just use enter data and just make a straight oh, okay. table right so there. Arbitrary. Okay. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Usually I'll format it in Excel if it's particularly long and then copy it over. Anybody else? This is more of a question that just leads on from what he was just asking. So could you take that table and actually store it in an SSAS, in a tabular mode, um, in SSAS tabular mode, so that, that order table? Do you think you could put that into SSAS and, and do that? Yeah? Okay. Thanks. That's right. Sure. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for answering, because I was yeah. like, I think you can, but that makes sense, but I don't know. <laughs> yes. Have you had any problems when you're doing this where um, the, you can't get all the numbers to format the way you want if there are percentages oh, or yes. things? Um, and how do you handle that? Because then you can't change sorts. It kind of formats them as text. Correct. So that is one of the challenges. And in here, if you're looking at the measures, I've done uh, force formatting, which does make it text. But for the display, when they're looking at it, that works. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll have two layers of measures, one where it's um, outputting the way it wants to, a second one that is reformatting it. And for displays like this, I'll use the reformatted version. 
But for anything else, when I'm doing, you know, more visuals, that sort of stuff, I'll use the actual value. Comments, we'll take those. <laughs> so I've also seen the switch used um, for switching between periods of time. Mm. So let's mm -hmm. say you want to do months, quarters, and years. You can use a switch in that okay. use case as well. So yep. um, that way you're not locked down to maybe a bunch of slicers, but one switch that you can get through. You through all of them? Yeah. I, I've done something similar doing uh, buttons and bookmarks between different views of it. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Hopefully no concerns. How about your awesome Sherry? <laughs> Thank you. You've been a, a pillar for a while at our user group. I think we got one more. Oh. So this is a general question. So sort of with the same type of using tables, has anyone ever done a Sankey graph? And have you had to use a table to be able to get the Sankey values in? Um, well, yeah. The one that we were doing was sort of um, kind of an attrition of, um, you can call it following an inventory item through its life cycle to understand mm. costs and adjustments and sale prices and losses and stuff through a Sankey. And it was a really great way to display that. Um, I, I think I'm missing the question, but I just use that, that. There's like a custom visual that they have for the Sankey and Power BI. They use that, and I was showing like relationship of, um, I think it was for Azure resources by region just to kind of show which region is associated, but we, I don't know. We found that that one Sankey that they had a we f we're just talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> we found that the one Sankey that was available in the marketplace a couple of years ago actually wasn't. It, it didn't meet all of our all of our purposes. So yeah. So it was yours is probably more simple than what we're trying to do. All right. Okay. I'll just figured I would ask because it is table driven. <laughs> Other questions? Does everybody just want to go home? All right. Well, thank you, Sherry. Certainly.